Hey everyone, uh, so this video I'm going to teach you how I study animation. And I'm not talking about um, how I study animation in, in art school or how I study animation in the traditional sense, but in a different, I, I, it, it's about how I, how I took my animation from a different level from where I'm at or where I was and how I took it to the, uh, to the next level. Um, and, and the reason I made this video is because I, I don't see people talk about this technique a lot. Uh, it's people tell you to watch animation and frame by frame watch it, but there's there's no ex real explanation to it on how how to do it and what you should look for, uh, and why are you doing it and how often should you do it. Uh, that's that's the reason I made this. And uh, everyone has a um, different motivational level. Everyone has a different way of learning. Um, uh, for, for someone like me, I, I learned, I struggle in school. I struggle in school and in art school as well. Uh, when I was in school, I was like a C and D student. I, in art school, I was like a B and C student. It's still not that great. You know, I, I thought I would be doing better, but just because school wasn't my way of learning, my, my learning style, and the, so the motivation wasn't there. And only like later, um, during early in my career, I started uh, really learn how to animate. Really, uh, just uh, just finding my own way of learning. Um, that's that's back then when I was learning about the principles. Uh, uh, yeah, that's why I want you to um, find find your own way of learning, and maybe this video can kind of inspire you in finding your own different way of learning animation. Uh, you know, I, I was in, I was a teacher, teaching assistant in my art school, teaching animation at one point, and we see a lot of different type of students. Um, some were really fast learners, some very slow, and most of people are somewhere in between. Uh, so we we always have to think of different ways to teach uh, uh, students and help them understand certain things. And even those techniques weren't great, you know. So. I, I I over time I I realized that uh, I, we we all have a different uh, learning style and I hope this video can help you find uh, your way of doing it or even give the uh, experiment with this kind of uh, style as well. Okay, right, so I have a few animation clips right here. There's no particular reason why I chose these. Like these are not like the the best thing ever, but. Uh, I have like a huge collection of animations that I like to just watch it and digest frame by frame it and see what they did uh, right and see what I could uh, kind of put it into my my library my animation library in my head uh, uh, that's that's why that's why I do this uh, yeah let's get uh, to it so let's say uh, this this clip I mute the sound wait this I just cut, uh, cut out this particular part of animation is about nine seconds so it's you can see it's like your own shot in your demo wheel or your own personal shot uh, yeah after you watch it and you en enjoyed it with the sound on and you feel inspired by it and you want to go back and watch it and you know really study it so the first thing you want to do is mute the sound no sound at all um, because you want to eliminate any distraction they're not uh, distraction, yeah, distraction, because you want to focus on just the animation. In a perfect world, I would like to watch this in uh, just play blast with no textures and some textures, and with no lighting, no effects. Um, but you know, you just take what you can and just just study it. Um, I mute the sound, and the first thing I do is I study the timing and the rhythm. Uh, when you when you mute, it, it's much easier to see the timing where. Uh, certain beats are bigger, some are smaller, some poses hold a little bit longer, some hold a little bit uh, less, and sometimes they move a little bit quicker, sometimes slower. Uh, that's that's what creates good timing. You have a variation of big, big, medium, and small beats, and these kind of beats can be made with the amount of uh, uh, distance they travel or yeah, the amount of distance they travel or the amount of time they travel. So these can create different type of beats. It's hard to pinpoint what kind of beats they are. Uh, it's, it's hard to pinpoint like, okay, this is a small beat. This is a medium beat. 
but I can just, I can try to explain to you like what looks like a small beat and what looks like a medium beat in here. Uh, so, yep, let's look at this animation first. So, um, so after you watch it a few times and just try to try to listen to the beat into your head in your in your mind. The the jumps and the 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 swings and the spins they kind of create a kind of a rhythm of uh, uh yeah rhythm and timing. And what looks like a medium beat to me is like uh, jumps like this. When he jumps off this rock, that could be like a medium beat. That that could be a bigger medium beat. This kick could be a medium big medium beat or a big one. It depends. That one's definitely a big one where he jumps up like that. That spin could be somewhere like a medium and a small one. A it's his slide is is a beat as uh, is a beat as well. Um, beats doesn't doesn't always have to be like a like a boom like a big hit, like a jump or a punch or a kick. It could be a a spin or a slide like this a spinning move. It creates a beat as well, but it's a different type of beat. It's like a kind of spinning beat. I don't explain it, but it it creates a a lot of variation in your timing. You know, you could even see it as. Uh, this spinning a bunch of tiny beats, you know, and uh, this this one is definitely a big beat, and uh, a lot a lot of people struggle to explain timing when you ask uh, animators, uh, even professional ones. They it's hard to explain timing because it's it's about uh, ex experience and over time of doing it and watching it, you you get a rhythm of things. Um, I'm a. Uh, if you play the game uh, Dark Souls or Souls like slow Souls like games, and how they fight bosses, it's by looking at their rhythm. Um, how when they do certain things, um, you you know when they do this, this is gonna happen, and that creates a rhythm, and that happens because they they f they fight the bosses hundreds of times, and it just goes in their head, and just they just kind of know. Uh, this is their rhythm. This is their beat, and uh, uh, that's the same as in animation. And when you when you study things, there's a rhythm in things. Even this applies to uh, character design as well. You there's there's a rhythm in their design. Their head's small. Their body's big. Their legs are really tiny and long. Uh, whatever like like that. That's that's the flow and there's a rhythm and timing to it. Uh, yeah, I think that's the small. Explanation: The timing and rhythm is overexposure. Just keep watching it. Uh, let's look at something else with timing and rhythm. Variations of timing and rhythm. Uh, this short fight scene in Spider Verse. It's about five seconds long. Five seconds. It's crazy. Now, if you watch it. And try to listen to the watch. Look at the beat. Look at the rhythm. Especially uh, this part right here. This shot. There's like a boop 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 boop, and then the grab pauses as as a strong beat to there, and then there's a big body slam. Boop boop boop. Yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna make any like silly noises. It's it's pretty distracting, but yeah, I want you to listen to the beat to that. Listen to the beat. Listen to the rhythm. Let's look at something else. Let's uh, look at another League of Legends thing. Now, with no sound, I'm gonna play it back. I'm gonna play it back a few times just for you to see it. Right now, watch uh, the the lady. I, I don't know her name. I don't play the game. Uh, this this lady, right? Uh, listen, watch her rhythm. Right? Do you see like certain moments where there's like? Multiple beats, and sometimes there's one giant beat. I think right here. Uh, 
when she does this move. I think that's that's one. This is a beat. This I see this as a beat when she tucks her when she tucks her body in. So this is one, this is two, and this is three. When he, she stretches down, and you got four right there. And these are all smaller beats, like this knee tucking, this body stretching and stretching down. It's like boom, boom, boom. It's different. And then you got her, and then she gets back up, and she. It's not very big beat from doing this shot. And she does this cool slide motion with slow mo. And she's the one that stands out the most in the shot. This is my, this is my my favorite shot in this whole uh, cinematic. The guy doesn't really have that much of a, uh, a beat and rhythm, but it's the the two of them to co together. It creates like a nice uh, rhythm to it. Let's look at uh, something else. Yeah, this one. What really stands out to me is when he does this uh, claw. That this claw movement is really cool. Cause you got everything like a big slam. When he hits the wall, that's there's a bit of a stick, there's a bit of uh, a pause and timing, it's like boom, boom and four. Like that. Boom four. And then you got that really quick uh claw movement. Right, let's look at something else. Brawl Stars. Right, this is a cinematic by the Brawl Stars people. Let's watch it without sound. Sorry. Look at all the small little mo little movements that he does. Like uh, picking up, picking up that bottle and placing it on the table. It's, it's um, it's different from the the last one he does at the end, where it's a lot more quick. Oh, what else? Even the the way he spin his uh, body this way, it's a really cool idea. Uh, creates a lot of character. There's this small little thing right here too. Yeah, it's the way he goes from here to th this motion. It's not it's not just uh one and tick and go, but there's like a boom boom boom. After you place the thing, right? There's like a boom boom boom. And the big boom <laughs> is is the when when he does this uh crazy hit spin move. And this, this motion as well. It goes from a uh, this and a big one like that, like a big spaghetti move. His his head double takes. The way he double take, is it double take? Yeah, it's double double take. It's not the same, you know. It's not just one and two. It's one two, it has a different timing to it. One, two, and that uh, they, they they vary from each other too. Like one of them, it's this this head tick is a small one, and then you got this big cartoony one. Nice squash, nice stretch, like there. Let's see what else can I talk about here? Yeah, uh, that's uh, timing and rhythm. Timing and rhythm in conclusion is. Uh, Overexposure, um, I think that's that's the key to it. And watching it without any sound, because uh, I know sound is really cool. It's really nice to hear all these crisp sounds. But uh, we want to focus on animation. This is our department, you know, because everyone is doing their best in their own department to make, and everyone's kind of bringing this 
quality of whatever they're doing to the highest and when everyone's at their highest this this whole uh, cinematic or whatever things you're making becomes like this this giant thing you have to look at the big picture of of things um yeah Let's see what else yeah overexposure do this as much as you can just to watch uh rhythm and timing and this could apply to different things as well but in this video i'll focus on this the 3d animation portion of it since we're, we're all i think most of us are 3d animators here so i think that's 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 where we should start uh let's see okay the next thing i want to talk about is the next thing i look at is posing um posing is another big thing to me uh rhythm and timing and posing these two things are very important uh, they're the hardest to get in anim any animation piece that you do. Uh, a posing could could also tell the tell uh, tell a story about the character, like what kind of character they are, and yeah, uh, not it's not just uh, clear poses with negative spaces and nice flow. That's that's character as well. So let's look back at this short. Notice like all these clear poses there's there's a nice flow nice flow to it it's very clear to the to the um the viewer it's very clear silhouette there's big negative spaces uh, even here and you got this like uh shapes of the leg uh, when you animate characters like this with uh hind legs like this this animal legs yeah animal legs uh you want to always have like a bend on the toe like this so you don't want it to be perfectly f flat like a human you know uh they they call it man in a suit so you want to avoid uh things like that um and this you want to see a very clear shape of this knee and then this hind leg and then this a little bit of this if you can um you, you want to avoid looking like this because now it looks like a human leg right this there's your feet there's your knee your calves uh, it looks like a they call it um, a man in suit so avoid things like that uh, they do a good job here as well posing yeah even here is is very clear you could s this is like a bouncing ball this is this entire thing is when you go from a squash into a stretch Let's see Let's see you got his, his squash his overall shape and then he goes to this uh stretch it's a nice use of his um, cape feather thing, and uh, this is my my um, a philosophy uh, philosophy. Yeah, I guess a philosophy or technique to it. Um, the the pose that you see the most requires more time in polishing the pose. Wait, yeah, yeah. If you see a pose the longest, you should spend more time polishing that pose. If it's a quick motion, you don't need to spend it too much because uh, not right now at least. And then maybe later towards the polish stage, polishing stage, you can put in more time to it if you have you if you have it. So not every single frame has to have a perfect pose, right? Um, let's see, what's a, a big clear pose? Like these jumping poses right here. This is a big pose. Uh, the, spend more time on making it clear this uh, moments like this like these cakes has to be clear so you, you can see that he's clearly clearly kicking the guy's face and there's a nice flow to it and the, the arms flow to each other as well uh, it flows down here as well foot yeah yeah see the it flows down here And especially this big pose has to be super clear. Flow to each other, flow down like this. Even it flows down to the tail as well, like that. Uh, even got the, the the the. Let's call it a feather. Let's call it wings. Yeah, I'm just gonna call it a wing because I have no idea what that is. This wing uh, creates a nice shape as well. Uh, it sells the motion of the the troll. It's like the overlap motion. The 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 wing. 
and you know the, the the guy being thrown away he's it's very clear that he's being stretched that way um let's see that as well you can see this uh, sliding post quite a bit this sliding post so you require some time to make it look clear but the big poses are probably like like this one this is a very big clear pose we see this i don't know i see this pose the most this and this this uh, anticipation and this pose the most so that means you're gonna have to spend more time polishing these poses make, making sure that uh, the center of mass makes sense uh, the weight distribution from his whoops so weight distribution from this leg to this knee uh, you, you don't want it to be exactly right in the middle like exactly right in the middle um, you want it to be a little bit offset so you don't want it like this but you want it something like like this you know that's that's a bit of a uh, a, a shift uh, so that way it's not like a like a big it doesn't look so it doesn't look stiff like this right you want it to be a little bit more angled yep and the fingers you can see that it's a nice shape as well all these small little details how the fingers flow to each other so it's this it's not just one shape like this like a flat hand it, that's a nice bend creates a nice silhouette like that if you look at your hands a lot uh your hands has a nice natural flow no i don't know why a lot of times your hands has a nice natural flow no matter what angle it is uh, the way it's curled and it's it's pretty tricky to capture sometimes hands um but practice practice makes perfect but yeah you can see the the fingers nicely posed uh this is a nice great pose that's like a little bit of slow wet here i mean that's that's um empty space right here and they flow to each other like that so it doesn't even though this is um this pose is like right almost like right straight to the camera uh, actually angled down a little bit they they still add a little bit of a flow like this you know so it's, it's not it's, it, like this so it's not just a straight line so that's great and you got this wing it creates a nice uh uh design you know that, that's a big shape right here and that's like your body is medium shape and i don't know what this is is it a tail yeah that's like a medium shape you know these tiny little shapes as well they flow to each other i uh flow is a big thing in in posing sometimes it doesn't work flow uh, making putting flow in certain pose but most of the time it, it works and you you do want to put it as much as you can let's look into something else uh let's go out of order this time this is a very interesting um choice um just because of this one two and three shots they are so quick it's hard to read certain things so they make certain choices that um cam certain camera choices uh, which i'll talk about later about camera you can see at uh, this shot his hands are like are like like this and at the next shot it, it, he's still inside but he hasn't come out yet and after this shot uh it's a totally different pose compared to this is it this one it's a double hand claw catch like that but the next one it's a one hand it's a this is one hand doing it and because of the framing because uh, this this looks better if if they made the choice of following like this you know he'll be kind of like like that oops claw claw and like that you know it won't be as cool and you won't look as nice i mean this looks looks fine but it makes him look a bit stupid <laughs> because he's just running straight to the wall so uh and it won't look good when he's following up to this you know crashing against the wall and it's got really nice poses here like all these empty spaces and all these like nice shapes nice empty space even like right here you know where the fingers uh tangent with the the leg that's what they call tangents when you're where the end of the hand and whatever like the leg it's they they hit right at, at this spot you know so you, you want to avoid things like that provides 
you want to try to provide some overlap. So this is the leg. The hand could be right here. You don't want you don't want things like this where the leg is like this and then the hand is like exactly right there. So you don't want things like that. But overlap, overlap is good. Uh, what else? Yeah, really clear pulls right here. You see, really clean. Some nice offsets as well. well. I'll talk about that later. But I want to focus on just posing. And this this another this awesome moment right here. It it really tells it really shows the follower's character. He's like this predator, you know, character. So um, think about think about character as well on your poses. Uh, on your think about character in your poses. Yeah, think about character in your poses. Uh, this one this one matches follow perfectly because he's such a crazy claw like character. Uh let's see. Yeah, big clear pose with the 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 hands like claw up like that. And oh what else? Yeah you can see they all flow to each other. It's all like this. And they, they all flow to each other like that. So you don't want your your hands to be perfectly on screen like like that, that would, that would be a mistake. You know, you don't want it to be perfectly on the screen like, like that. You know, you want it to be a, a little bit of an angle. If you have a chance to like pose your hands like, um, like this to screen where it looks completely flat, where the fingers looks like it's going straight line. But if you rotate a little bit, you could see a nice curve on the fingers. Uh, things like that, you want to put that in your animation as much as you can. Um, create some show some flow in the body uh, they say it's rhythm as well i don't know some some artists call it rhythm um but yeah i guess it's a rhythm as well flow and rhythm in the body uh what else let's look at something else ball stars uh, a lot of great poses here a lot of great ones uh, i love i love this anticipation <laughs> it's so cartoony i love it this this whole cartoony pose, that that jump and take and then he goes, he goes into this. It's really great. And doing these uh, spinning movements, it's really good as well. If you, you know, if you can do things like this, that really matches the character. He could just move. He could just move a move aside, her dancing. Uh, like a normal person but because he's a robot you know go go crazy you can you can turn his head like that so it's perfect and he can stretch like that he's kind of like a spaghetti robot i guess and the way that they he tosses this thing over over to the other end like that it's really good these are these are part of like um pose posing is about giving ideas of what's what's happening it's it's like um storyboarding and if you're drawing comics and if you're story yeah storyboarding, you're giving ideas of what's happening. So being an animator, you're not just a creating movement expert. You're also uh, giving uh, you're you're also putting ideas. So you get to put a little bit of yourself into it. You know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, look at the way this this dude, the way he eats. What did he just eat? Is that a candle? <laughs> he just ate a candle. Okay. Um, there's a nice uh, rotation on the head, side by side like that. When he eats, it's not just yum yum yum. It's it's like that. Um, yum yum yum. And the way he anticipate to do this fire thing, it's it's as nice twist, right? He doesn't just anticipate back and boom he. Anticipates and turn like that. That's a nice. That's a nice angle. That's a bit of an angle like that. I think that's a little bit of an angle like that. I can tell. Yeah, it's a little bit of an angle like that. That's how you create a uh, uh, appealing poses. Let's see if I could find. Yeah, like this pose as well. That's that's this angle and the hips is like this. The head is tilted like this. The head could be like this too. Oops, the head could be like this as well, but this this makes sense. This makes sense. Uh, 
And um, when you do these, uh, when you try out poses, I recommend that you either draw it out or you actually get up off your chair or to get off of your computer and actually move your body um, and try to do that pose with a mirror. If you if you have a mirror, that's ideal. Or just record yourself doing it and see how it feels. You know, uh, see how your where's your weight? Is your weight? Um, if you move your hips back like this, can you balance? How do you and how do you offset that balance? You might if you move your hips back, you probably lean your chest and he your head forward to counterbalance, right? Or your hips move forward, then you your chest moves back to counter uh, balance. So there's a lot of uh, physics uh, keep in mind. And since we're not, we're all most of us not physics experts. Uh, there are some people that are. So um, the be the best way to learn is is to actually feel it yourself, to use your body. That's for me at, at least. Um, I think a, a lot of people are like that. Some people don't even use references, and they do really good animation. That's that's perfectly fine. But uh, yeah, this this is what it's all about is finding your own way of learning. And this is one of my way of learning it is by actually getting up my seat and doing it. Like even uh, to try to do movements like that, try to do it in real life. It's it's pretty silly. Like you could see your body, you could actually feel your body being waved back like that. I could, um, yeah. What else? Posing, posing. You know, this is a very nice, interesting finger choice. You know, this is pinky. It's like, you know, gentleman style. And this was the pinky up. And you probably do that in real life too. I'm just grabbing something and see how it feels. Yeah, uh, depending, I guess it depends on your character. Uh, de some people, they like to hold things like, like, oh, like a manly grip. But if it's something that's small, you might just hold it like that with two fingers. And naturally, your pinky just comes up. Um, in my initial character, I as well. Uh, let's see. Did I miss something else? All right, let's look at something else. Posing. Yeah, this one has a lot of great poses. League of Legends, at the pretty flawless. <laughs> I mean, with their posing, it's really cool. Uh, let's see. And not every pose. Um, posing. You want to think about posing. With variation as well. Um, uh, hmm, let's see. Yeah, posing. It's it's kind of um, it tells a story as well about how the character moves, and I I think about this a lot too when I when I animate or think of about my next shot. Is what kind of variation of movements can I throw in? Like sometimes there will be a punch, and then sometimes there'll be a a kick. Sometimes it's a spinning kick. Sometimes it's a slide. Sometimes it's a slide to a punch, and sometimes it's a flip. Sometimes it's a spin. I do a lot of spins. If if you ever notice in my animations, sometimes it's a spin. Uh, sometimes it's a really small movement like uh, cocking the head like that, or like a wink. Uh, adding all these little different things, they they create a lot of appeal to your characters. And you you do all these different things. You have good timing. You have good posing. You have a good whatever else. And all these together makes good animation. It's not just one thing, you know. But there are certain things that weighs more um, like posing and timing they, they I think they I personally think they're way more than the other uh, things like like spacing and arcs because they're they're easier to digest but uh, posing and timing it's, it's a little trickier to, to really understand so it takes time and uh, yeah I noticed things like this like her pose is just a straight line and it's just sh shooting down like that it's very very simple very clean uh, it's not something I would do, but it's it's cool that they they do it and and it creates variation to all her moves like all her power moves like this, like shooting like that, like this. Oh, she's shooting backwards, yeah. And see a dynamic. Um, try to pose your camera in a very dynamic way. So what I mean is, uh certain parts of the body is closer to the camera like like this what i have right now my ha this hand is closer this hand is further back this way you know it's a lot more dynamic right compared to if i just stand square to the camera like that it's very flat 
So uh, whatever, whenever you can, as much as you can, I try to make some dynamic where things are close to the camera, things are further away. It, it creates a lot of a uh, very cool effect. If, if you watch a lot of uh, Kung Fu movies or anime, they do this a lot, where a lot of like angles like this, where hands are close to the camera, and sometimes the camera will be moving as well. It creates a lot of uh, feel, a lot of cool effect, and it looks really good. So uh, I encourage, you, I think, to do things like that, like especially this pose. You got this close to the camera. It's a little hard to see this part because of all these uh, things that's going on. But you could see it from here, like where she's. Where this part is close to the camera, this is where's the hands right here. It's really small, and the hands are bigger here. You know, that's 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 a bit of a dynamic where where it's moving uh, uh, back. You know, that's 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 depth, depth. The way I'm saying it sounds very really strange. Uh, yeah, you want to show depth because um, so we can we can feel the environment. You know, we can tell that she is in a real place. There's there's that's closer to you and that's further away from you. Uh, death. I, I'm not gonna explain that. I don't know why I just went into that. Uh, let's look at something else. Let's look at uh, Spider Man. Spider Verse, I mean. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's so good. I'm pretty jealous. <laughs> so, anyway, um, good posing. Great posing. Spider Man pose, classic. This relates to camera, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, quick posing, like yeah, especially this this entire uh frame right here. It's it's like a movie poster. I mean, it's like a a wallpaper you could put. Uh, you notice like this is close to the camera and this is further away. It creates a lot of uh, dynamic dy dynamic. <laughs> That's quite dynamic. They even they changed the camera to a local, local fo a lower focal length, so that you know things like this. This is bigger to the camera, and things like this is smaller to the camera. Uh, anime does this a lot, a lot of um, fish eye lens, and it's really cool to see that uh, Spider Man doing it. You know, there's there's flow in the fingers. I talk about fingers a lot. It seems. Uh, it's a cool shape, like this. Whoop. It's really it's really tough to post fingers like this, um, because it's really really um complicated. Like I don't know how people do this, but uh, it, and it depends on people. Like some people can do things like this, some people can't. But uh, yeah, looking at shapes like this, um, there's a nice slim shape and there's a big shape. Sometimes you don't get much control as an animator. Depends it depends on the rig sometimes. Uh, and legs, there's a nice shape right here. Is this the, the heel? Yeah, this is the, the bottom of the foot. But overall, that's like a nice shape. So it's not just a, like a stump, you know. It's a nice flow. It goes from bigger and then smaller and then getting bigger again. Looks like the cape. Yeah, the cape is. I think the cape is hanky as well, right here, which is good because of how fast this is going on. There's there's always a nice shape going on with the cape. Yeah, look at this one. <coughs> His foot as well, good shape. Uh, let's see. Oh uh, yeah, his fingers. Look at that. It, there's this. You you see more of the index, and then you see less of the middle. You see less of the ring, and you see about less of the pinky. But they they kind of created this flow, like this, right? Even even the hands here has a nice has a nice silhouette, just like that. Uh, compared to if if your hands, if you pose your hands perfectly square, it's it's not as good. Right, you you want this this nice this nice flow right here. Sorry if you could hear my keyboard; it's pretty loud. And the back of the hand here, uh, in situations like this, you want to try to show the back of the hand 
as as much as you can because um in weird angles like this sometimes it's hard to see this thing especially with the cape going on but uh, as much as you can try to show things that are behind so i think a, a mistake you might see I, I think you might see this in student uh beginners or i don't know some animations that i, I would see like uh, the hands this part of the hand you won't be able to see at all so it's completely completely gone and you you missed out a lot uh, and you might see it as oh it's because of the cables in a way but, so he's covering the hand but you know try your best to some to show the hand if you can uh things like this is really cool yeah as much as you can try to get like really nice uh silhouette and flow like even flows to hands uh cape um yeah down to like this and down and then uh with the spider-man's body flows like that looking at a uh, uh, body flow let's see I think I talked about this right yeah I did and I talked about this and this oh, wait yeah uh, so a conclusion about posing um, it's line of action having really clear line of action uh, yeah like that really clear line of action and giving po variation of posing ideas that tells the character uh, shows the audience what kind of character they are whether are they a soft character or they a very aggressive uh, predator kind of character and have variations of different movements like um, if you're doing an action scene so having I talked about having spins and jumps and slides and small hits and big hits and even flourishes like when they're if they're just spinning a sword to look cool that's that's totally cool as well um, that's totally cool that's totally cool to add in as well that that helps with giving variations to your to your uh your animation um that that helps with your timing as well it's it's one of the things that i i i think about is having variations to, to my animation uh yeah that's that's it for posing S same thing as well posing you just watch a lot of stuff and try to study it watch anime as well anime is it's great anime is really great po posing um yeah let's see what else okay let's move let's move on to something else uh, let's look at body mechanics and smears yeah let's just look at this one um Let me watch this again. All right. Uh, so for body mechanics, I look at what the first thing I look at is what leads the 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 motion. Like, what do you see move first, and what drives the motion? So, for example, when let's see this. Let's look at a big one like this motion right here. Uh, what I, I could tell you what I see first is that his legs move first, then his hips, then everything else. Uh, almost everything else at the same time. Not exactly. Of course, the arms would be last because uh, it has a nice overlap. Yeah, when I when you look at when you look at things and try to understand like what's driving the motion, it helps you offset. Uh, you know what 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 to move first. So like like this this motion i i know that um the the legs come down first i could could see it see the legs moving down but the everything else stays relatively the same like this part here it's relatively the same but the leg is the leg here is slowly moving moving down and you could see the the hips uh, starting to reach his uh, apex of his movement and then the chest you can see the chest is still moving right still moving hips hip uh torso and then the hands still a little bit of movement going on like especially in this one still a little bit of movement even the fingers as well right? the, the little finger right there and then that's the the settle where, where the hands are, are going down 
let's look at something else <coughs> uh, this is a good example of uh, bouncing ball why it's so important because of uh, the start squash and stretch of things like this is this is like a bouncing ball this oh wait not this one this is like a stretch the your stretching bouncing ball and this is your your squash this is your stretch again and this is your your squash and your stretch um, and to create like squash and stretch in your your character since it's not a ball obviously so you you can crunch them down as as much as you can if your your person is like that and how would you get them into this you might you know squash them down like this so this is torso torso hips and knees hit my drawings are not great but it you, you see that effect there's a there's a squash and there's a i mean you got a squash and then you got a, a, a stretch so yeah that's that's why I, I use the bouncing ball as as a as one of my workflows. Like I would use a bouncing ball just to get the timing of things um, without without too many controls to mess with. Yeah, let's see. And notice when he when he's going down, his arms his arms to provide overlap. It's it's actually going up right the, the hands are going up that creates overlap you see it's, it's still going up and this is a nice uh this is a nice choice where where he's going down but his legs is not leading a movement right this in this case his hips is going first because uh when when you go from when he goes from here and when he's moving down like that naturally you would think that you know this is the hips this is the the legs naturally you you would think that you stretch your leg down i i think i would do that too um i might even actually i might do this instead i might do things like this instead like one leg stretch and one leg bend but um but i think it suits this character maybe because I, I don't really know this dude <laughs> this character I think it's stretch when he happens when he's off screen. And yeah, look at and also look at things like this where his hand is stretching. Like when when do they stretch his hand? Yeah, look at this hand is down like this, but this hand is way stretched out like that. This hand's relatively uh uh it's the same. Uh, one thing I learned about uh, offsets is uh, think about your body parts moving in different directions. So if you've got your hips and your torso, let's look at hips and torso. Let's put some legs here. Uh, hmm, maybe not hips and torso. But let's look at hips and arms. Uh, the reason is because um, it's a bit different sometimes uh, yeah, with your arms. So if your hips is moving this way, hips is moving that way. Okay, this really depends on context, and your arms should just, but should still be uh, relatively the same, relatively the same space as this one, right? Or sometimes the arms will be moving back. Um, that that creates a overlap. But you have different parts of your body moving in different directions, so you're not you're not taking the whole character and just moving it uh together at, at the same time uh, there's there's a bit of a spacing difference depending on on the character depending on the weight like movements like this where he's, he does the slide he starts here his hands right here when sliding his hand is still uh right there it creates a nice cool offset uh, this one's easier to see because it's it, his hands on the ground uh, um, 
a, a, a mistake, a beginner mistake you might see is like if they take this character, they they slide like this, and he looks exactly like the shape. And then when he's sliding, he looks his shape didn't change, but this one they his shape changed. You know, it went from 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 this, oops, yeah, from that to a more stretched out version of it. Right, it goes from a, like a, so you can see like a squash and a stretch. Let's look at this one. Oh, this is a really quick motion right there. The way he jumps. Let's look at something else. Spider verse. Yeah, this is mechanics. But the good thing about this particular animation, it's these are uh, these kind of motions you can do in real life. You can perform it yourself. You could watch videos on how they do it. Uh, the way the way he, he throws his kicks, um, kicking usually comes from the hips. So you you probably see the hips kick uh, twist first. And the camera is moving a lot, so it's it's really hard to see. You see, there's there's a there's a twist, there's a rotation on the hips. It rotates, then the leg. Follows through and kick. It's cool to see like uh, one frame like that, boom, because kicks are so quick. I also look at a uh, uh, spacing of of hits, like like swings like this. Can I do this? Yeah, the spacing of this arm swing. His arm is relatively still there, and he goes here. It's like a big space difference and whenever you have big space difference like this it means uh, the faster the motion and it goes to this and you can see it's uh, settled and started to happen wait is it there yeah and his spacing is, is a lot more smaller after that And looking at the mechanics of this toss over, he picks him up. So he, he, he his hips he goes up like this, picks up, and then he toss him over. Cause uh, yeah, I mean if if you do martial arts or you, if you try this out with a friend, <laughs> don't 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 hurt your friend. Just try him try and hot and see how you pick them up, and you will see that a lot of power comes from the hips. I I don't mean to draw his his going but it comes from the hips you have to pick him up then you can flip him over and this portion of um, of studying I also look at smears like this this duplicated arm um, smears with like tiny lines like this but I saw something you also look at smears like like the hands it's different type of smears Let's look at mechanics, more mechanics stuff. Yeah, this one is really good stuff. Um, yeah, this is a great, great example of offsets and how you create a nice flowy, squashy movement like that. Just that movement right there. Notice that. Okay, let's start from here. His leg starts moving there. Then this other leg starts moving. You can see this nice big stretch right there. But his head is still relatively the same spot, right? It's it's moving a little bit. You want that. See that big difference between his body, the way it's moving so much, and then the head is only moving a little bit. Uh, that's good. Because um, you create overlap that way. You can see this as like um like a chain, like a rope, uh, animating a rope or tail. Uh, that's that's a chain of action, right? That's the like this. So if this is if this one moves, then uh, the information gets transferred to this, and then it goes to that, and it goes to that, and it goes to that. You can see it that way. Uh, offsets. 
like what moves first and how does the other thing follow through the hand as well you could see that it's see the legs are the legs the legs are going down but the hand his right hand is going up and that's that's why I mean about um, different limbs going uh, moving at a different time you know uh, that that, cre that creates offset that really that's a big moment for me when I, I was trying to figure out how to make my characters loose um, my characters used to be pretty stiff um, my my animation style in the past is pretty generic and looks pretty stiff in the past but yeah uh, what else yeah, like big movements like that, that big spaghetti move. Legs go first. And then a big stretch on the torso. And then a big stretch on the head. And then a settle, right? Everything settle. You can look at ox as well. Like um, when I I I rarely look at ox because it's really you you want to add ox everywhere, pretty much almost everywhere as much as you can. Uh, so a good example. This is an obvious ox where the, the the tray goes over his head, but the way he catches it and brings it over, it's it's not a straight line. It's actually not going in like that. It's actually going like that, like a dip, right? That creates a little bit of an arc. The way he brings it in and comes back up. And that's your settle. So as much as you can try to add arcs. Like even the way he places down uh, this candle right here. His hand is moving in, in this kind of arc. When he places down on, on the table. Right. This one. This hand. Oh. Too many drawings. The hand starts from here and he moves to like like this I think yeah because that arc and he goes to that and it slides forward so it creates a nice flowy arc like this and stuff was picking up and straight down you know you want you don't want you want to avoid things like like that um, arcs is, is another thing that that really m makes your animation look easy to watch you know it makes it easier for your viewers to look at things. Let's see. Yeah, let's look at this one. I like this um this motion right here. Let's look at her. She goes from this jump and this this creates a nice uh, rhythm and timing to it because you got this more slow motion of like jumping up the spacing is relatively ev uh, relatively even not even but you know it's it's closer to to realistic to it but then you get this nice tuck and it stops midair a little bit and she stretches down really quick. It's a nice rhythm to it if you just look at her. That's big snappy movement of moving down like this. The way he she from from this and then her legs stretches down really big, but her her head and torso is relatively still. And then th and then you can see the, the, the hip starts kicking in. And then it really kicks in and the, the torso is like stretched out. And you can see that the torso is slowly getting little um getting less stretch. You know, she goes from this to a little bit less stretch and then to a little bit less stretch and to her uh final pose. And there's there's still a bit of movement going on, that's the bit of a settle. And the hands as well, like when she comes, when she drops down, her hands are actually going up, right? Overlap. You see, the hands are going up like this. 
It's getting stretchier. So she her, her hand goes from her hand goes from this whoops. Hand goes what? <laughs> okay. Her hand goes from this shape to a little bit more stretched out, like like that, right? And you got this like nice quick motion. And you, you uh, look at the pose, like how steady she is. How, you know, this is a solid pose. She's not, her hips is not too far back, too far f forward. It's, I can see the legs. So this is, maybe this is a good way to hide it. You know, if you don't show the legs. See what else? Yeah. What else can we look at? I also look at uh, smears a lot. I think I even talk about smears. So let's talk about smears. It's my favorite thing in the world. Uh, smears. There's different. Lot, there's a variation of types. Of smears you can use you can stretch out your mesh you could duplicate your mesh or you can use effects or you can use lines uh, different techniques to it depending on what works but uh, at League of Legends they like to stretch out their characters a lot uh, which is great because I, I love it let's see I don't think there's much in this particular shot Just a little bit, but not not too big like the the wing. So let's look at something else. Smears, yeah. Prowler has a very interesting uh, smear effect because he uses lights. So it's really cool because uh, when you whenever whatever you can you know try to use uh, something that identifies them. You got this light it creates a smear effect and. Uh, Knowing when to use smears, it's uh, for quick motions. You want to use smears. You don't want to use it too much, because uh, if you use smears too much, it it will look like your character is actually being stretched, like it's growing. Your character is growing, and you want to avoid things like that. So um, smears only on on hits. You know, like things like this. It goes from there to there. So you need this to kind of help the viewer see the motion. I think here as well. Yeah, it's a big smear. If I'm using the lights or using lines as well, even the the smears effects here. Yeah, see quick motion like this, or like a big arm swing like that. And the way I like to oh, let's see if this one does it. Okay, this one does. Okay, uh, smears. Uh, I like to look. Smears is kind of like animation as well, because uh, it, it goes from a stretch and it slowly uh, goes um, smaller. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's, so there's a spacing, there's an ease out to it, um, Smears. And let's see. And Smears, you don't want it to be too long, it has to be where they left off. So let's, where's my pen? Okay, from here, next frame. And notice the smear is ends where the hand begins right it ends where where it begins like that and then as he goes it gets longer and you could see it it disappears uh, pretty much almost disappeared and you got these these um lines you got these lines to sell a um, little bit of smears a um, little bit of quick motion so you could see like it it goes from a smaller shape to a longer shape and then it could disappear uh, sometimes or you could just slowly get smaller and the thing with smears is you don't want to be on screen for too long I think about two to three frames um, that's, uh, I might have a smear like this because he goes from uh, like one frame like frame one and then oh, how do I draw this out this is strange okay let's see a bouncing ball be frame one and then 
maybe frame 2 he'll be stretched out and this is his smears <laughs> and frame 3 could settle but the smears are still going on a little bit just a little bit and frame 4 uh, it's gone uh, the, frame, uh, the smears are gone yeah so I think the, the, the rule to smears is don't have it for too long um, just I think only like maximum four frames you don't want it for too long because yeah like mentioned that it looks like your characters are being stretched out or something like that you want it to just be quick enough to see it but not too long that you actually feel it and then um, smears it, it can be character stretching as well like the other animation I was talking about ah this one this is technically a smear like like this part here it's technically a smear you don't because you don't really see it but you feel you know her, her being quick um this does you you can feel the overlap and you can feel the offset and it feels nice and squashy and she looks real not real but <laughs> appealing i guess yeah i feel how to explain why smears look good but they just look good uh let's see yeah, even like stretches like, like, like this, this is technically a smear. Like the way he stretches out his body like this, that's a smear. And they don't really have it for that long. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, about three to four frames where his body is being stretched out uh, abnormally. And I mentioned there's different types of smears. That's that's my my favorite way of doing smears. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Even the lines here. Let's see how he does it. There's no smears here. There's a little bit. And then there's a lot more. And you can see it's slowly shrinking. And it's gone. Right? So it's one, two, three. About three frames of smearing right there. The one on the punch, yeah. See right there. It's a big smear. Boop, boop, boop. The lights as well, and it's it's getting smaller, shrinking a little bit, and the lines are gone. But here's still a little bit going. Yeah, the lights is, mm, yeah, it's still there, but it's not as distracting as you know having a bunch of lines like this. Another way of smearing is duplicating the arms that you might see here, right there. The arms right there. I'm oh right there as well. That's a lot. Uh there's another one that's still like going on. It's still there, you know. I'm not I'm not a big fan of like duplicating arms as a smear because maybe I'm not good at it. I, I don't it's hard to see it. But I tend I like s stretching out the characters because um, it's really nice to see them stretch out like this, you know. But I observe them anyway and just see how uh, would they how would they use that kind of smearing technique and and, s and what situation would they use it? And lights, like all these lights, these creates. Technically, a smear it's, it's it makes it easier for you to see. Uh, that's what uh, smears are for is to help you guide the action that's too quick. You see it a lot in gaming animation. Um, they use effects to create a uh, smear effect. Uh, it helps you guide the action. That's it. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, so that uh, I want to conclude about smears. Uh, wait, yeah, I want to play all of them. Oh well, yeah. Uh, smears don't uh, you don't want it to be on screen for too long. Maximum four frames, S uh, one to four frames somewhere around there. The smear effects. Um, yeah, too long makes it look like your character is being stretched. Avoid that. Um, 
the spacing on smears as well you want to think about that um, sometimes it doesn't always stay in the same shape as it goes it might start with a long shape then it gets smaller and really small and then disappears uh, yeah think of smears as as ease that's easing and ease out as well and only put them in very quick motion don't don't force it in you know um, smears can be stretching as well your characters being stretched like the torso uh, translating your torso that's technically a smear as well or stretching your arms uh, yeah so let's move on to camera movements and how I study it uh, so lately I've been studying a lot of camera movements uh, this keep it very simple just, just keep it with, with two shots now if you watch the camera movement uh, throughout this shot it's relatively smooth right there's a bit of a zoom out zoom in and zoom out but try to avoid too much of that uh, so keep it around like this so that you can see the cameras rotating tracking character uh, framing your character nicely as well is good notice like um, the characters towards the left side of the camera there's still a big open space here so you can introduce this guy coming in And uh, the the way they they spawn this character, it's it's a nice place because he's looking right at it. Uh, so posing and and camera goes hand to hand sometimes, a lot of times. And this is part of the posing choices. The way he he gets kicked, he gets kicked and he flies towards the camera. So you create some dynamic uh, motion to it. It's not just going left and right. Uh, you want things further away coming towards screen something from screen going away from it like this he's throwing away he's going further away from the camera this guy being thrown away and yeah this this all part of creating variations to your posing uh, using cameras like having your characters moving towards screen like that where you could yeah having your characters moving towards screen is really good to create like um, some rhythm to it and sometimes the camera sometimes the camera gets really really close to his face and sometimes it goes really far away and uh, yeah the, the camera is still relatively linear uh, smooth right and the way they cut I look at the way they cut cameras uh, you want you don't want cameras to be smooth towards the end so you don't want a nice ease out in cameras especially when it's consecutive shots so like this two shots they, they link up to each other it's one continuous movement right so when if you look at your camera graph it starts from here uh it and this is uh this is next cut but you don't want it you don't want it to be like like that it doesn't flat out like that and then coming out like that you, you don't want things like this uh so a lot of times you want it to be linear and then when the when the cut happens it, it's still linear so it, it has a has a nice uh has a nice con continuous movement to it and notice like the, the camera's turning to right side yeah turning to right side and from here it's still turning to the right side so you don't want your camera to be like turning right and suddenly it's turning this way in the next shot it's it's gonna it's gonna hurt your height you hurt your brain <laughs> i think uh because you, you see things just suddenly uh, change directions it's it's too fast to force to keep up Let's see and another thing you want to think about is the camera leads the character leads the camera's motion so you don't want your camera okay this this is your character this is your camera you don't want them to move one to one and you don't want your camera to move up then your character moves up like that you want it to be like this see the character moves then the camera moves right you want the character to always lead the char character to lead the camera right <laughs> the words don't do well sometimes yeah especially here the, ca the character jumps up it's almost out of frame you only see his foot and then the camera starts panning up and you see him So a common mistake you might see is the character and the camera move up at the same time. You don't want you don't want that, you know. 
like this as well. The the character is leading the motion. He's he's moving in this in the space, and the camera is trying to keep up. You know, it's just following, guiding the character, and uh, depending where you cut, you want it to be easy for us to see. So if your character is in this space, like this whole entire space of camera, right? It's here. The next shot is down here. It's not not too bad of a transition. You go from there to to down there. It's it's easier for us to see. You know, took. I think a bad a bad way to place your character is to, like up here. It's it might be tough to see. It's an awkward spot because you know what's what's going on back here. You know you don't you don't want things like that. So putting your camp your character here and you can see a big spacing right here. Yeah, you can see your character flying towards th this. So if if you have a character that's facing this way your camera has to be like this right so we can we can see what he's looking at and we can anticipate the next shot uh, a mistake you might see is if the cam the character is looking this way and the camera's frame like this this is is bad because unless we're expecting something to happen back here you know someone's going to come behind stab or something uh you uh, this this and but something else is happening down here. We won't. We cannot see it. So make sure that you frame your camera uh, nicely. Let's look at uh, Spider Verse. Yeah, I talked about like really nice to have characters moving towards the screen and away from the screen. This is a great example. This is also part of uh, posing choices where they first Prowler is here, then Spider Man is here, but now they are switched places now. Sp Follows here, Spider Man's here. Uh, that's good variations of your poses. Uh, let's see, a nice low angle so the camera is it's down and tilted up a little bit. So it's down and tilted up a little bit. And the focal length, the focal length is pretty low. So you get this like really cool fish eye lens effect where this is bigger and this is smaller. Uh, things like that. Uh, this is bigger. This is smaller. It's a nice cam, nice dynamic to it, like that, right? Bigger and then smaller. And this is much bigger, and this is smaller. That creates a lot of very cool dynamic effects. Also, look at uh, camera shakes, like uh, this stump right here. And even the camera shake has animation to it because uh, it doesn't go. Uh, that's like these are the keyframes, right? It doesn't go kung kung and then it goes back to normal. It it goes like kung kung and it's a little bit less and it gets smaller and smaller and it flats out. Right, the camera move. So it goes from it it vibrates. It doesn't go huh. It doesn't just hit and complete stop. And I also look at cameras like the way uh, when fight scene, they like to move the camera around like this. It creates some, uh, you know, some crazy things going um, to make things look more out of control. Like a fight scene, it's, it's pretty chaotic. So the camera is tilting down and then tilting up and still kind of sh moving around like this. But if you're first starting out, uh, try to avoid things like that because they're pretty tricky to do, especially on Maya because they're trying to simulate a real life camera moving around like this. So it might take some practice to get it right. And notice how the camera is like slowly panning. So is it panning? Slowly moving towards down and and around the character. So if I stage this like to this is Paolo, this is Spider Man. They are they're going at it. Uh, they're fighting. The camera is right here and slowly moving. Like this, you know, it's, it's 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 rotating a little bit, and it's also moving at the 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 down translate y a little bit. So it's it's tilting and it's going down like this.
and I, I mentioned about cameras they they don't lean out right they don't go out like this it doesn't this doesn't happen let me put an X that don't happen you know we don't want that you want to have it a straight linear line so if you look at the camera it's it's pretty linear it's moving it's moving it's still moving relatively <laughs> the same right keep it steady I think this one's cool this is nice long angle so you'll notice the camera is just tracking this character relatively smooth, you know. There's no crazy like huh, crazy jerks. It's if you look at the graph, it's probably really pretty linear, uh, pretty smooth. I mean, you just auto tangent it and keep it that way. See the way they cut this? Yeah. Notice that the camera starts moving, turning right, like that. It turns right and. The next shot, it's, it's continuing. It's still moving uh, right, L pretty linear. And then the camera, you could see, is starting to settle. So it's moving, it's following that movement, and slowly starting to settle. Let's see what else. And this one can be a little bit different because there's slow mo into it. This one takes some planning to, to figure this out because uh, this this two character is moving um, in sync, not in sync, but one after another. So it's the guy, then the girl, then the guy, then the girl, um, and you don't want to confuse with the don't want to confuse the audience by both happening at the same time, like they're both going at it, doing their own thing. So it, usually you see the guy. So in this shot, you see the guy first, then you see the girl, then you see the guy, then you see the girl, then you see, you kind of see the guy right right there and you still see the girl and go dude and lady again and you see both of them it's kind of like a duet isn't it kind of like music if um, there's a guy and a girl they're singing together and sometimes they 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 offset to each other and then suddenly they, they kind of finish the music together But uh, yeah, creating cameras, um, it does. It works hand to hand with animation sometimes. A lot of times, when it's when it's when the camera's moving, it's pretty tricky. Hmm. Yeah, this one. This is an interesting cut. Um, these these three shots because because they're so it's so quick the shot. These these three shots are so quick that they, they do certain things that you don't expect like at this shot it ends with the arms like this like there right but then the next shot he's completely it's he's still inside and then he jumps out I think they they had to offset maybe one two three four five six seven yeah about seven five frames or so they set it back so we can uh, keep up so we can we understand what what just happened you see that in movies a lot. I, I, some other sh Spider Verse shots, um, where they they move the frames back for the next shot, so we can actually keep up what's what's going on. So here as well, see he ends in this grabbing pose, but then in this one he's still uh, charging. But sometimes they just they just have the shots uh, right after another without any offsets. So uh, yeah, it depends on uh, on what's going on, like how quick the motions are. Yeah. So to conclude about uh, cameras, uh, keep them pretty steady and smooth and linear. Um, yeah, keep them very no uh, not too much movements on the camera because it's it gets really distracting um have your character lead the cam character lead the camera right so your your ca your character is always moving first then your camera follows never one to one try to avoid as much as you can one to one um have have your character move in different spaces on your on your camera so sometimes your, if your camera is like this your character is here try to s have them move he, here sometimes with the with a steady camera without the camera movement 
have your character move uh, to a different sp space. Uh, it creates a variation and it, sh it shows that you know your character is in a 3D space like, like you are. It's not, it, they are not attached to the camera. It's not a first person shooter or something. So um, that, that creates a sense of realism. Uh, you, you, can, you can understand like something that's grounded it's, it's nice to see characters move, you know, if, if your character and your camera moves at the same time, it's, it can be a little distracting, so it takes a bit of, uh, of practice. And cutting, next thing is how to cut. Always cut mid-action, ideally cut mid-action. So mid-action, he's still like, like this, he's still doing this move, and the next shot, he's still in the middle of doing that move. Or this one, yeah. See, he's he's going for his kick, and then next shot, he's he's going to its kick. They even offset this a little bit. Wait, I don't think so. Yeah, it's pretty um one after another. So what else what was I talking about? Yeah, camera cuts. Uh, yeah, cut at actions, right? Don't cut at the end of actions because it feels like, okay, now start. I'm gonna go do something, and then stop and then next shot okay now i'm going to do something so you want to avoid things like that it's like okay ready and go okay ready and go you don't want things like that you want things to be very smooth when you're cutting cameras so uh cutting mid action is it's it's very good to make things uh, flow to each other so he's going here you can see his uh he's doing his cake and he's going for another cake yeah he's going for another cake you can see him anticipating he's, he's winding up for his other cake Right there. Doing this. Yeah. This as well. And this is definitely mid action, you could tell you could tell. Yeah, another thing was uh offsetting offsetting the next shot. So if like shots like this is so quick, this shot is only like ten frames. It's it's way too fast to see it. Uh yeah, you might have to offset it back a little bit for a few frames so that we can we can actually keep up and see things. And they they do this in spite of us quite a bit uh, because of their motion because the motions are so quick. Uh, a lot of other animations do this too, but um, because spider verse is so action heavy, so it's e it's easy to see it, and they have a very interesting style as well. So yeah, it's very interesting to see. And yeah, I recommend that you watch uh, spider verse. Um, study it. Uh, cut out the clips like what I did, and you know frame by frame and see what they do because. They they do a lot of great things like this. Uh, yeah, I think that's all uh, for camera. So, yeah, I hope this this helps you uh, think. Um, hope this helps you see the way I I kind of digest animations, and how I watch animation, and how do I break things down. Uh, I'm a little bit all over the place because uh, there, there's a lot of things that I watch at the same time. I don't watch things like one at a time. I don't watch it. Now timing, okay, now posing, now camera. I just watch all of them at the same time, one after another. Because I'm, I'm, I'm just so uh, used to it. But So you don't have to really watch it the way I do it. Uh, you don't, yeah. And you don't have to watch the things that I watch. You, you don't have to watch uh, game animations or movies if you're not into it. You can watch stop motion, uh, anything like that. But uh, I recommend that you watch, uh, pick things out that's that's already finished, a finished shipped product. So just so you know that, just so you know what's, what, what the industry wants. Um, uh, for now, maybe if you're a beginner, try not to watch um, uh, personal animations because uh, personal animations tend to go through just a few, tr few people or maybe just one person. And I don't think, I'm not saying that their animation is not good enough, but it's, but uh, I want you to, to, to see what the industry uh, once you know what's what's really done and why why they hire you for they want you to make things like these things and see what you can learn from them <clears throat> but towards the end of the, your your animation skill uh, when you start to you start to see what uh, what good animations look like in personal animation uh, other people's personal animations then you can go uh, and and study it uh, yeah hmm I think that's it. Um, yeah, I hope you get you learn something 
out of this and I'm co I'm gonna make um a part two of this on uh, studying studying animation uh, where we're gonna look at different mediums of animation we can we're gonna look at like a uh, music maybe stand-up comedy I'm, I haven't looked at it yet but because stand-up has very good timing and and rhythm nobody not many people think about it but time uh, comedy has good timing as well but um, I want you to look at different mediums uh, just to get yourself overexposed over overexposure of what the rhythm and what timing is so music comedy uh, uh, movies dialogue I, there's some really cool stuff that I found online uh, 2d animation pixel animation um, any, anything that you that you like and you can see and and try to figure out what what timing is you know pick something that you like to do um, that that's a that's a big uh, um, a learning mistake that I, I see in, in schools and not people not many people talk about because they they think that's a that's a rigid way of uh, of learning something but there's different ways to learn things so uh, all my, my videos is about teaching you how to learn you know it's not teaching you animation but it's teaching you anim teaching you how to learn through animation if that makes sense yeah right. uh, I'll see you next time for um, part two right bye